All right, welcome back guys. This video is about Chisology and there is a lot to go over, so I'm just gonna hustle through it so this video isn't stupid long. We're gonna start with carving chisels. The only type of carving chisel I have experience with and the only type of, and the only carving chisel I truly love are fail carping, carping, carping chisels. Anyways, I started about 10 years ago getting into carving just uh, as a hobby. And I started off by buying this intermediate carving chisel set. Uh, it comes with like 12 different profiles. They're small, the small size chisels that Fail makes. And this is a great beginner set. I was able to do just pretty much anything I wanted to do. I was into carving signs and stuff like that. But I found that once you start re really getting into it and doing a little bit larger scale stuff, these smaller chisels, well, they're good for small work, but eventually uh, as your dreams and imagination starts to expand, so does your tool inventory. So the process that I took was just as I took on each project, I would try and do the project with the chisels that I had. And if I ran into a situation where I just needed a bigger chisel just because it was taking so long to do with a small chisel or just the profile or the texture it was leaving, um, I would just go out and buy the chisel that I needed um, so that I wasn't just buying unnecessary chisels that I don't actually use because there are several chisels in here that I use 90% of the time and then some that I've only used like two or three times. So not every profile is going to get used the same amount. So I recommend if you're into carving, just start off with something like a broad set like this. This is available on my Amazon store as well so you can check those out. And then you can buy chisels individually both online on my Amazon store or from different woodworking stores. A lot of higher end woodworking stores all carry the failed chisels because they're the best carving chisels in the world. So I'm sure there are a lot of other really good carving chisel manufacturers and I'm not trying to rag on anybody. I'm just saying these are the ones that I use and I've been blown away with their just edge retention and the quality of the steel and the cut. So I've just never tried any other chisels because they're amazeballs. But I will say that as you get into more serious carving and like sculpture work, you're gonna want the larger size chisels. You can see that they're a couple inches longer and just bigger handles. And they hog out a lot of wood really quickly. But they do run about like 30 to $40 a pop depending on the size of the chisel. So they can be quite expensive. So just buy them as you need them. And pretty soon you will find that you have a large chest full of them. If you're just like, well, where do I start? I don't know if I'm quite ready for that. Uh, and the investment and this and that. The easiest way to start carving is to do chip carving. You only need like two knives. This tiny little knife here and this little kind of skew chisel. And chip, what chip carving is, is like relief carving that's meant to go on like flat surfaces of either furniture or just boards and you can do all sorts of geometrical designs and you're just cutting kind of small triangular faceted reliefs into the wood and it's a fairly easy um, technique and it's really rewarding because you can create these really beautiful elaborate carvings uh, with just a couple simple tools or fail. Also just makes these nice chip carving knives and they're probably the cheapest and easiest to get your hands on. So. So if you're starting out, maybe think about just starting with chip carving and then you can move on to like full on sculptural. And Phil also makes these kind of cool spoon gouges where you can gouge out bowls and hog out a lot of material and spot seat bottoms and stuff like that. And I will tell you that the steel that these Swiss use is absolutely phenomenal. If they were ever to make a set of like timber framing chisels with like large handles and blades, I would buy them. They do make straight bench chisels, um, which are like the smaller ones for like fine woodworking. So you can check those out as well. And rest assured, you will not be disappointed with the quality of these tools. All right, moving on to framing chisels, Japanese chisels. Um, when I started out uh, getting into timber framing, I bought a few like North American style socket chisels on eBay. That is really the primary place that you're gonna find these tools affordably. So if you haven't done any searches for like timber framing chisels or Japanese chisels on eBay, that's where you gotta go to find the chisels. And I'll try and give you a little bit more information on how to find good chisels on eBay because there's a lot of stuff out there and not all of it's good. But when it comes to North American chisels, typically the older the better. So uh, any chisels that you can find online that look like they're 80 to 100 years plus old, you know that the steel's gonna be good. This actually is a laminated chisel. It's kind of been hollow ground. Um, and I need to do a bit of work restoring it. But honestly, I don't use it because it's just, it just weighs like four pounds. It's just an absolute beast. And I prefer Japanese chisels just because of the way they feel in the hand and the balance and the quality of the steel. Not to say that this steel isn't amazing. I just haven't really tried it out. But if you love the North American style tools, you can find tons of these online. They usually run anywhere from like 50 to 100 bucks. 
but you know that this is going to last you several lifetimes. You're going to give it to your kids. Mind you, they'll probably all work on computers and they won't even know what carpentry is. All right, so I will tell you that the majority of my experience is with Japanese tools, and you can see that I have a large variety here. So there are several sizes of Japanese tools, starting with their bench chisels, which are around eight inches long, good for workshops and furniture and small work. And then you move on to, I think it's the Atsunomi, which are around 10 inches. Um, I'm not sure what that actually means in Japanese, um, but these are a little bit better for doing somewhat larger work. And then you move on to the tataki no mi, which are like the 12 inch timber chisels for doing deep mortises and stuff like that. And then you can move on to even bigger, like super timber chisels, which do like crazy big stuff for, you know, they call this like a temple builder's chisel, um, where you're doing huge mortises through like large timbers. And I will tell you that these chisels are expensive from like 150 to like $200 a piece. But this is what I do for a living and I do quality work and so you have to have quality tools because the two go hand in hand. I will say that even Japanese chisels, you can find them reasonably priced used on eBay. I'm pretty sure I paid like $70 for this beautiful dovetail slick on eBay. And what makes it a dovetail slick, you might ask? Well, if you look at the profile, it's triangular. So they taper the edge of the chisel right down there's a little tiny straight section, but it's pretty much right down to a point on the edge, and that allows you to get into the corner of your dovetail when you're cleaning out joints. So it's really handy to have a dovetail chisel either in a slick form or also in some smaller um, bench style formats for doing really small dovetail joinery work. And then I also recommend having at least one large slick. All the Japanese chisels come in like millimeter forms, but there are like really close equivalents to the inches. I think this is like a 48 millimeter, which is about two inches. And then the 36 millimeter is, a, is close to an inch and a half. So this slick is just beautiful. I bought this one online, I don't remember where, but it's really good. I think it's a Matsumura chisel. And the great thing about slicks is that you can just, you can put your weight behind these chisels and pair across the grain or end grain or really anything depending on how, how sharp your edge is and just move a lot of wood without having to use a mallet. You can just push it and cut and it's just, they're phenomenal to use. So I recommend having a slick. Now you're thinking like, okay, well, how do I tell the good, the good chisels from the bad chisels? Well, rest assured, if you're buying a Japanese chisel, especially a used one, on eBay, it's likely gonna be way better quality than any crap you're gonna buy at Home Depot or some hardware store here in North America. Because Japanese chisels are all pretty much hand forged, you know, the people that are forging these things are not gonna just use absolute garbage steel and go through the whole process of laminating it to a softer iron and, you know, creating this beautiful tool. So the things to look for when you're trying to find a good used Japanese chisel is you want to check the, the quality of the blade. So obviously the, the depth, the amount that's left on it, you'll see that when you're on eBay, you'll find some chisels that have been worn down to like little nubs. So you want them to have kind of as long a blade as possible, but they don't typically have these really long blades that North American chisels have. Um, so especially on bench chisels, you're only going to get about a two inch blade on them and then, you know, maybe three to four inches um, once you get into the larger chisels. But trust me, that's more than a lifetime's worth of chisel. The next thing you wanna look for is like a nice clean lamination line. Uh, sometimes you'll see a little bit of a black line right where the soft iron laminates to the cutting steel. That's a bad sign. So check that there's a nice smooth lamination line as well as the hollow ground. This is called the ura, the flat side of the blade. Um, you wanna make sure that the, the hollow ground is still largely intact. What this hollow ground on the back side of the blade does is it decreases friction when you're doing like paring cuts on a flat surface so you have a really good keen sense of your actual cutting edge. As well as when you're sharpening the back of the blade and you're flattening it, um, you're only cutting that little bit of steel on the outside edge and this is all out of the way. So you're cutting a lot less steel, makes lapping your blade go quite quickly. So it really is a genius design, that hollow ground. So you want that to be as, as much intact as possible, but it can still be a good chisel if, if the guy that owned it before you kind of wore it down and it's mostly just flat. The other thing to look for is the hoop on the handle. Oftentimes the indicator of a, of a high quality chisel is a hand hammered hoop. So you have these smooth round hoops and then you have these ones that have been hand hammered all the way around. And that's usually a sign of a little bit higher quality chisel. But that's not to say that you can't get really good chisels with the, the cheaper just round hoop on them. The only other information I can give you is to check out this book by Toshio Odate. It's Japanese hand tools, their tradition and spirit and use. 
because um, you will want to read up a little bit on Japanese chisels. It takes a bit of work to, to really fine tune them and get them sharp, as well as with Japanese planes. So if you're going to get into Japanese tools, you have to be willing to really invest some time either just researching and understanding Japanese tools, as well as really restoring them properly and using them the way they're intended to be used. So the best way to be able to tell a crap chisel from a good chisel, is obviously you want to stay away from like big lots where you can get a ton of chisels for kind of cheap, but the majority of them are going to be kind of really rough shape and just not well looked after. And it's going to end up just being way more work than it's worth. So I, I typically stay away from the big lot purchases and I'll try and buy chisels individually where the seller's actually taken time to like photograph the full chisel, all the different sides, showing you the URA, and the hollow ground and the quality of the chisel close up and giving you measurements of it. There's a lot of good sellers on eBay that do this. And be sure to read the fine print because a lot of times the pictures will be deceiving and this chisel, when it's taken a close up, you'll think, man, that's a massive timber chisel. And then you get it in the mail and you're like, oh, it's a bench chisel and it's actually really tiny. I will say that I try and spend like $30 or less per piece. Um, and a lot of times you can get really good quality chisels for, you know, 15, $20, depending on who's bidding on them. So I have found that's the cheapest possible way to get your hands on some quality handmade Japanese chisels. The beautiful thing about Japanese chisels is that they are a hybrid of both the European style and North American style um, socket and tang chisels. This is a tang chisel. You can see that it has this tang that's meant to just be pounded into a, a hole in the wood handle. And oftentimes there's a little steel ferrule around there that holds it together. But tang chisels don't usually stand up to the abuse and the handles often break and that's why you find them in this condition. Then there's the socket chisel where the handle is just wedged into a socket. Those are great. You can really pound on them. This one's a socket chisel and you can see that the handle just kind of it's pressure fit in there. Now what Japanese chisels are is that they are tang and socket chisels. So this part, the body of the chisel actually has a tang on it that goes up into the handle and then they add this this tapered hoop here that then the handle is pounded down onto it. So you're getting this immense pressure in both directions and it makes really an indestructible chisel handle. You'll never break the handle on a Japanese chisel unless you're being a total idiot with it. So the design really hasn't changed in like centuries and centuries in Japan and it is a superior design. As well as just the size and the feel of Japanese chisels, everything about them is just aesthetically wonderful and the way that they function also wonderful. So really it's just that attention to detail that makes Japanese chisels so attractive to me personally. That's not to say that the Europeans don't make wonderful chisels. They do. I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm just saying that I personally love Japanese chisels. The main difference being uh, just the construction and also the hardness of the steel. A lot of times Japanese chisels are a little bit harder steel. So the RC scale um, instead of being in like the high 50s, it's in the low 60s. So you get a little bit more toughness on a lot of the blades. So you won't be sharpening them quite as much as say North American chisels or you know Swedish or European chisels. But that's not always the case. So I'm just saying that's kind of the main differences. I'm just trying to give you some knowledge, okay? So don't be hating on me in the comments section, all right? So yeah, don't forget, check the quality of the grind. You wanna make sure that people haven't been using electric grinders on them. You wanna see that there's a clear maker's mark stamped on the blade. The hand hammered hoop is also a good indicator of quality. But rest assured, if you buy a chisel that's in decent shape and it's a laminated Japanese hand forged chisel, you are not going to be disappointed. Unless you've paid like $400 for it or something stupid, which I don't recommend doing. So you just have to be diligent. You have to check your searches regularly. I checked on like a daily basis for years and I stumbled and found all these wonderful gems and it kind of became a hobby of mine. But now that I have like toolboxes full of chisels, I'm not really worried about all you guys competing for chisels on eBay because I just don't buy that many anymore. But I'm not gonna say I'm done completely. I know some of you guys are like, oh, what are, the, are there other chisels that are good? And I would say um, if you can get old chisels like the old marples, these are decent and kind of middle of the line. They're good quality steel. They're just usually not super hard. So if you, you know, they nick a little easier and the edges wear down a little easier, but they're solid chisels. The old ones anyways, that were actually made in Sheffield, England. So it's good if you can find like maker's marks, like where they're made, like, you know, this one's Middlesex manufacturing and like Greenfield and there's, you know, Swan chisels. Uh, a lot of the old manufacturers in the old days in the United States, they're all making really good quality s steel chisels. Um, chisels that are made in like Italy, Sheffield, England, Germany, Swiss steel. You can always depend that, you know, these old school European chisels are using 
quality steel and they're properly forged and they just require a little bit of work like you got these split handles and stuff like that so you can find all different types but stay away from these plastic handled cheap shit that you get at like Home Depot and you know other places because even though you can put a really sharp edge on them that edge will last for like 10 seconds and then you're just going to be utterly disappointed. Remember the most important factor in having a good chisel is the quality of the edge that you put on it. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you absolutely have to get a hold of me or have an answer to some question, leave a comment, hit me on Facebook, send me an email, just be the squeaky wheel and eventually I'll get so irritated that I'll respond to your emails. But typically I try and be in a good mood and respond to as many emails as I can. I'm just, but I'm one guy and I get just dumped with emails sometimes so so forgive me if I don't get back to you right away but I always will if you really nag me so be sure to like this video share it with your other tool nerd friends make sure you're subscribed if you want you can find these fail Swiss made carving chisels on my Amazon store as well as a couple Japanese chisels so just click that link up in the corner in the description box below but if you're really looking to get a bargain and find some Japanese tools the best place to find them is on eBay all right until next time guys Samurai out.